Welcome back to Vision Auto Garage. My name's Rob and this is episode five of the Mid-Engine Metro project. I found some time this week while waiting for some part deliveries to make a few more tubes for the roll cage. And in today's episode, I'm hoping to fabricate the front legs. But before I crack on with that, I've got some work to do on my family car. I've been chasing a knock from the front and rear suspension of my XC90 for a couple of months. I'm really hoping a new lower ball joint and anti-roll bar drop links front and rear will solve it. Being a Volvo, everything is very well built, and there are so many links and bushes in the suspension, it's hard to identify faults unless they are severe. I've already replaced the offside front drop link, and from experience the quickest way to remove the old one is to cut off the nuts. Even so, I try the book method first, then resort to the cutting disc. Removing the old lower ball joint requires removing the hub assembly in order to drift it out. Getting the new one in needs to be done on the bench. Reassembly is the reverse of removal, giving all the bolts a good brush of copper grease to aid future maintenance. I'll need to take it for a full wheel alignment having disturbed most of the geometry in the last few weeks. Once assembled, all the bolts are tightened to torque and the lower ball joint nut is torqued under load. Well that's half the day gone and as usual a couple of hours has turned into several more, but at least now I can focus on the metro. I'm going to start by marking out and measuring for one of the front legs. Squeezing in and around this little car could get tiresome. So the front leg of my roll cage needs to join the main hoop in the centre of its curve. It needs to follow the roof line above the door, come down the windscreen pillar, and then meet the floor at the bottom of the A-post. It's going to have to miss this cross brace, and I'm probably going to have to modify the scuttle where it's recessed for the bonnet hinges. After a few minutes consideration, I've decided to remove the body cross brace and steering column support. It's going to be a whole lot easier, and there's nothing on it I can't replicate with tube. Once the steering column is out, the cross brace can be removed by drilling out five spot welds on each end, three on the top and two underneath. Then I split the seam with a chisel. A few blows with the persuader and the piece is removed.
There's a load more space to work with and I won't need to modify the scuttle. When I make the tubular dash bar, I'll need to replicate the steering column mounting holes and bracketry. Before I can measure up for the front leg, there's a little bracket either side for mounting the dash that needs to be removed. Using my template bend, I can visualise and measure the bend radius, placement and distance between bends. Each leg needs to form a 90 degree bend in total, which makes it much simpler to check my angles. Time for another crude sketch. From the floor at the A post to the start of the first bend is 600 millimetres. We'll make a 50 degree bend rearwards with a 520 millimetre length. Before a 40 degree bend and a 550 millimetre length to the main hoop. The 40 degree bend needs to be offset by 10 degrees towards the outside of the car to mimic the windscreen pillar. I'll use a 2 meter length of 1.75 inch 12 gauge ROPT 510. When I approach the desired bend angle, I pay careful attention to gauge the spring back of the tube. After removing the anti-spring back ratchet, I can bend past the desired angle and release to check the spring back, then bend further to accommodate.
I forgot to mark the end of the bend whilst it was still in the die, so with it on the bench I can feel for the end of the depression in the tube and use my template bend to mark the end of the bend. From there I can mark the distance to the start of the 40 degree bend with the 10 degree offset. To set the offset, I zero an angle gauge on the die, then rotate the tube 10 degrees accordingly. Well, my first front leg has bent really nicely. I've offered it up and I think it's gonna be a really good fit. I can't trim the foot end yet because I haven't built the front plinths but I can start notching the rear side where it joins the main hoop. happy with the fit of this front leg. The seal actually angles inwards slightly so I'm not able to put it flush against the A post yet. But when it's chopped to fit on a plinth I should be able to tuck it in nicely. I'm not going to bend the other side yet until I've made a plinth just in case it's not going to work. I can't make the plinth today because I've run out of four mil plate. I can however make the other main hoop backstay. Taking measurements from the completed backstay I cut to length and notch one end of the tube. MSA Blue Book Section K stipulates a minimum of 30 degree angle on the backstays. I've achieved 32 and a half on the finish side and when the lower end is notched this side should come into line. It needed a fair amount of fine tuning on the lower notch before I was happy with the fit.
Next, out came the Artec Welding ACDC TIG 201, set to 120 amps to tack the new backstays in place. While the TIG was out and set up, I chose to weld most of the inside joints. This will enable me to pull the rear half of the cage forward and off of the plinths without it moving. Then I can fully weld the seams. As always, if you've enjoyed this episode, please do like, share and hit subscribe for weekly updates. Thanks for watching.